Good morning, Shiloh. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, the Lord's Church, where God's love and the word transform lives. I'm so glad you decided to join us here at Shiloh this morning for our morning worship or online if you're joining us for our broadcast. God bless you. God keep you and may heaven smile upon you. I know the Lord will make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Ooh, I know the Lord will make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, he'll make a way for me and for you. All you got to do is trust him. He will see you through. Oh, I know the Lord will make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, I've got a Savior who I can tell all. All my troubles too. Oh, I go to God in secret prayer. Cause he knows just what to do. Oh, he'll take care of all your problems for me and for you. All you gotta do is trust him. He will see you through. Cause I know the Lord will make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yeah. this morning Psalm 1 Psalm 1 it reads blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate 
day and night. It should be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord have a blessing to read his do his hears of his word. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Yes, Lord. Amazing grace. Yes, Lord. How sweet does sound. Yes, Lord Jesus. That saved a rich like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Dear Heavenly Father, it's me again, your humble servant. I come to you this morning, thanking you dearly Thank you, for Lord. last night lying down. Yes, Lord. Watching over me as I slumber and slept. Yeah. You didn't let any hurt, harm, or danger come before me. And I thank you. Thank you, Lord. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Yes, sir. You touched me with your finger of love. You allowed me to wake up to live and see this day. Because this is the day you have made. And we shall rejoice in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, you is good. <laughs> Father God, I thank you for all you've done and all you continuously to do. Ask and pray that you continuously to bless the bereavement family. Please, Lord. Father God, you know who they all are and know what they stand in the need of. Yeah. Bless the one that laying in the hospital. Don't even know if they're going to make it through this day. But you're a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Yes, Nothing is. is too hard for you to do. Yes, Lord. All they have to do is trust, ask, and believe, and it can be done. You're such a merciful God. Father, we thank you dearly for your son, whom you sent down on this earth to die for my sin and everyone else. You gave us all a right to the tree of life, and we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father God, you didn't stay there. You did exactly what you said he was going to do. Yeah. In three days, he was going to get up, and he did it. Father God, we ask and pray that you continuously to bless our pastor. Please, Lord. Pastor Brian K. Show and his family. Yes, Lord. Father, bless our shallow church family. Please, Lord. Bless every minister and their family at the each church door that stands open in your name. You know who they all are. But when it's all over down here, and I can't do no more, I ask and pray that you grant me a place in your kingdom where every day will be Sunday and Sabbath would have no end. And I'll continuously to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. These are our blessings that I ask, and in your name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I've had some good days. I've had hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights, but when I when I look around and think things over, all of my good days always my bad days and I I won't complain I've had some good days I've had hills to climb I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights but when i 
when I look around and think things over all of my good days always my bad days and I I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road I ask the question Lord Lord why so much pain but he knows what's best for me although my weary weary eyes can't see I'll just say thank you Lord I, I won't complain God has been so good to me He's been so good to me more than this old world uh, you could ever be he's been so good he's been so good he's been so good he's been so good to me late in the midnight hour he dried all my tears away turn all my midnights in today and I can stand here to say thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord I won't I won't complain God has been so good to me has he been good to you he been so good to me more than this old world more than this old world or you could ever be you see he's been so good 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 he's been so good, been so good. Been so good to me tears away turn all my midnights in today and I just want to say thank you Lord you've been food on my table thank you Lord you've been money in my pocket Lord thank you Lord you've been a friend to the friendless thank you Lord you've been a mother to the motherless thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord I won't I won't I won't complain You've been so good, Lord. You've been so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord in this place. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. Somebody ought to call his name. Who knows his name? Name is Jesus. Jesus. Somebody ought to shout, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. God is a good guy. All I got to do is remember he woke me up this morning. <laughs> he woke me up this morning. I know he woke you up because I can see you see you you're still shouting and still coming to the house of the lord to give him praise 
Amen, amen, amen. There is a word from the Lord today. We're going to continue in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm just going to read three verses this week. 13, 14, and 15. 1 Peter chapter 3. We're just going to read those three verses. We're still going to be talking about the reason for our hope. Our series this year is about following Jesus, well, finding Jesus, following Jesus, and having faith in Jesus. And one of the things about having faith in Jesus is you got to have some hope because when you find him, when you follow him, you got to keep your hope in Jesus Christ and God's word. Amen. The journey can get rough. The journey can get tough. But you got somebody who is there with you all the way. First Peter chapter three, verse number 13. And who is he that will harm you? If ye be followers of that which is good. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake. Happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The hope that is in you, the hope that is in you. I wanna talk a little bit today and I just wanna to tag today's message, lost and found, lost and found. You know, last week I was uh, talking about now is not the time to lose your hope. And let me make it clear, now is not the time to lose your hope in Jesus Christ. You know, I talked a little bit last week about how we sometimes put false hope in many things. Sometimes we live in despair and anguish and anxiety uh, because we put false hope in many things. And I came to share with you the biblical definition of hope and not the worldly definition of hope. You can look hope up in Webster if you want to, but Webster's hope won't do you any good. Webster's hope uh, can't make sure that what you're hoping for comes to pass. But our hope is in nothing else but the solid rock, Jesus Christ. And I wanted to be sure that we understood what hope is. So I asked the question last week, what is hope? And sometimes hope is the object of your hope or sometimes hope we're talking about what we're hoping for, the, the experience of hoping someone is hoping something. And I, I oftentimes every Sunday I come to help you, but today I'm coming to hope you. I'm hoping that I'm hoping somebody today as well as helping somebody today. Biblical hope is a strong, confident expectation. It's not wishful thinking. And that's why we have to be able to give a reason for our hope, for the hope that is in us, because we have a strong, confident expectation of what God is going to do. And often people are hoping for things or they're hoping to win the basketball game today or they're hoping to win the football game today or they're hoping to win the baseball game today. Uh, somebody might even be hoping to win the lottery today. I don't know. We in our carnalness hope for a lot of things we ought not be using the word hope for. See, Christian hope is different than worldly hope. You need to understand that our hope comes from the Lord. Jeremiah 29 11 says uh, that God gives us hope. God gives us. He, God desires an expected end for us and he's going to give us hope. 
And John said it like this, for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever shall, y'all know that scripture I know. You just got to believe in him and ye shall have eternal life. That's the promise of God. All you got to do is believe and follow Jesus Christ all the way home. That's your hope. And guess where it came from? came from God. Everything that we should hope for should come from God. I'm not, I'm not preaching against uh, prosperity, but in prosperity is good if God blesses you. If it comes from God, every, all good things come from above. But we try to get some stuff on our own. And that's the danger of living life on our own with our own hopes. Sometimes we make the mistake of putting our hope in people. And we think we can depend on people, mama or daddy or auntie or uncle or brother or sister. We put our hope in people and people will let you down. But God will never let you down. Sometimes uh, we put our hope in our money. Uh, we got a big fat bank account and, and we can trust that our money's not going to run out. But trust me, your money will run out. Even some of the wealthiest people in the world have run out of money. Uh, the man who claims to be the richest man in the world and, and wealthy, he didn't file bankruptcy seven times. And, and even though he was president, he still poked. We put our trust in money and schemes and, and uh, laws and we, we put our trust in all the wrong things. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11 says, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I reasoned as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And we need to put, church, we need to put childish thinking away. I'm reminded that we probably still engage in this birthday tradition. Uh, and I'm not, you know, I'm not condemning it. I'm just reminding us that it's a childish thing. And we do it in fun. We put candles in a cake. And we light all the candles. And we make wishes, don't we? Just, just be sure that's a wish. Don't put your hope in them wishes. Amen. That's something we grow up with. And, and we learn all these childish behaviors. But when we grow up, we ought to what? Put away childish things. We learn that we don't put our hope in people. We don't put our hope in wishes. We don't put our hope in money. But we put and keep our hope. At some point in our life, we decided to give our lives to Christ and put our hope in the one who could actually assure us of deliverance. Put away childish things. I like Corinthians 13 because when he's talking about putting away childish things, he reminds us of the things we need to pick up. He says what? Faith, hope, and love will endure forever. So when you put away childish things, make sure you pick up faith, hope, and love. Because those things will last forever. And the greatest of these, what is love? But faith, hope, and love, I like to look at them like the Trinity. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, faith, hope, and love, they work together. They are bound together. Uh, your faith leads to your hope. You put your faith in Jesus Christ, and that's where you get your hope. And God is the love that binds it together with his Holy Spirit. And if you got the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you, your hope will always be alive. The evidence, the evidence of your hope. So what are you really hoping for? Because that's really the key to living a happy life. Always really know what you're hoping for and really hoping for what, what God wants for your life. 
We got to transition our lives from hoping for the carnal things that are in the world. We watch TV and we watch way too much TV and listen to way too much radio because the world wants to convince you you need everything they have instead of what God has. The world wants to convince you you need those Nikes. The world wants to convince you you need those Jordans. The world wants you to believe you need that Gucci purse. That coach purse. The world wants you to believe you need all the things that they're offering. The fancy clothes, the big houses, uh, the Lamborghini cars, the, the, the fast life. The, the world wants to convince you you need all these things. But God wants you to convince you that you just need him. And I come to remind you that, that if you've lived long enough, you already have learned this. But I got some young people here today. I need to let you know, look at some of your elders who have lived. Uh, 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 Solomon said it like this. It's all vanity. I did it all. I had it all. But I lived long enough to know that that, that was all vanity. And all I really needed was the Lord. I went this way and that way and, and all around and, and, and had all manner. I ain't going to talk about Solomon, one of the great kings and wise men, but he wasn't wise enough to leave some stuff alone. But God was wise enough to leave his words so that we didn't have to make the mistakes he made. Vanity, vanity. Be careful about vain ambitions. And what you hope for. I hope. That I'm smart enough. To understand God's word. And young people remember this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all of these things that you think you need. God will add what you really need to your life. And some of you who have lived long enough and are still frustrated with your life and can't figure out why you haven't reached the level that you thought you should, maybe you didn't seek him first. And maybe he is yet to be first in your life. When you put Jesus Christ, God Almighty, first in your life, obey him and follow him, all other things will line up. Your hope is wrapped up in your salvation. Your hope, your salvation should be the object of your hope. Preacher, preacher, what do you mean? I'm hoping, hoping is for something you don't see or something you don't have. And I got my salvation. I know that's the way we look at it. We think the you see, hoping is for something you don't see and have not yet received. But you need to understand that salvation is a process. And the process of salvation, and you've heard me say it, but it's worth repeating. It, there's justification, sanctification, and glorification. And if I'm still looking at you in this sanctuary or online, you ain't been glorified yet. You know one day you're going to get your glorified body and your salvation will not be complete until you get your glorified body. And so you are still in the process of hope. But you have a confident expectation. It's not a wishful thinking that you're going to get your glorified body. You know that you know. Have, have old preacher say, you know that 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 you know. That God does not begin a work that he doesn't finish. You've been justified when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've received that justification, that righteousness. You sought out that righteousness and you became right with God when you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And he made you in right standing. And then he gave you the Holy Ghost. He imparted the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you to sanctify you, to put you in place, to begin to change your life through his Holy Spirit, to clean up 
your life. It's not like a magic wand. He didn't suddenly click his fingers and wave a magic wand over you and suddenly you were changed into the perfect uh, spiritual being that you need to be. It's a process. And we must submit to that process and keep our hope that, and keep our, our joy and because we're going to go through something. The truth of the matter is in order for God to get out of us what he needs to get out of us, it's like surgery. And sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's painful. But the Bible tells us to have joy when God is changing you. Growing pain. See, see we really don't like change. We'll, we'll, matter of fact, we'll put up with some painful things not to go through some surgery. Raise, raise your hand, Sister McGriff. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, Sister Faith got her hand up. You know what I'm talking about. You could be going through some painful circumstances and situations, and you know the surgeon can fix it, but because of fear, you won't walk that way. I just heard about what they did and I don't even want to have to ever go through anything like that. I cannot imagine going through that process. But in order for God to get some things out of us, he puts us in the fire. He puts us in a fire that it becomes very hot. It becomes, we can, can become agitated. We can become irritated. We can, we, be, we can even become violent if we're not careful. But God knows not to put more on us than we can bear. But he needs to burn it off. And we get, the sooner you go through the valley, the sooner you get to the other side. Yea, though I walk through the valley. God has something for you on the other side of the valley. But if you keep going in the valley, turn it around because it gets too dark in the valley. You're going to keep going in and out of the same valley over and over again that God is trying to deliver you through. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct your path. The Lord will lead you through the valley. You put your hope in the Lord. When you decide that, that I am going to follow him, even though I can't see my way. Because I know his faith, his hope, and his love endures forever. Because you trust him with your life. If you didn't trust him with your life, you wouldn't have turned your life over to him. You wouldn't have claimed him as your Lord and Savior. If you truly claimed him as your Lord and Savior, then you have to trust him. If you don't trust him, then he isn't your Lord and Savior. You, you hopefully, I help somebody. Because you got to really trust him. And you don't know if you trust him until you're faced with tribulation and trouble and he tries to lead you out and you follow him. It's when you follow Jesus in the midst of trouble, in the midst of tribulation, that you really know that you trust him. When you begin to walk in his ways, in the direction that he takes you, when it looks dark and dangerous, but you still trust him and follow him, that's when you know that you're following the Lord. Because you get to the other side and you see the light. And your experience builds on your experience. Because when you know the Lord, when you really know the Lord, when you have his Holy Spirit and you have his hope in you, it changes how you see yourself. That's step number one. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are and where you are with the Lord. That's why I said you got to find him. You got to learn to follow him. Lots of people found Jesus when he was on earth. Everybody didn't follow him. Many people started following him and started walking the other way. You got to decide where are you with the Lord? Did you find him? Did you follow him? Are you still following him? Are you still trusting in him? Because when you 
have his hope. It changes how you see yourself, how we see ourselves. You got to see yourself as a citizen of the kingdom. Not a citizen of this world. I know you're an American or maybe African-American or whatever you want to call yourself. But the reality is make sure you're a child of God. Make sure you grow up to be a man and woman of God. And make sure you understand what that citizenship in the kingdom means. What the responsibility of being a citizen in his kingdom means. Because when you're a citizen of a kingdom, you have a king, a ruler, somebody who has authority over your entire life. You no longer get to choose what you want to do. It changes you. It changes your perspective. And when it changes your perspective, it changes what you value. When you're a citizen of the king, when you, when you have this hope that God gives you, it changes what you value. At least it should change what you value. That's what part of the sanctification process is. Uh, you shouldn't value and seek after worldly things. You should seek after kingdom. You should become kingdom minded. You should seek after heavenly things. You should seek after developing the fruit of the spirit becomes more valuable to you than anything else. I can always tell when I'm talking to a wannabe Christian, somebody who says they're Christian, but really hasn't been saved because their values haven't changed. When they talk about what's important to them and what they value, uh, because what you value causes you to make certain decisions. What you value, what you seek after. Uh, and I just recently asked somebody, uh, list the 10 things you value and consider why the top two things you value, because I already knew what they valued. I've been talking to them for a while, trying to lead them to Christ. Why the top two things of you value are carnal lust of the flesh. Is it really that our flesh, feeding our flesh, should be something that we're trying to get away from? That's why Jesus said some things only come with fasting and prayer. Sometimes we need to break some things and break, get a breakthrough. We need to fast from some things if we're going to get a breakthrough. Got to learn to value the things that God values, to be heavenly minded and not carnal minded, fleshly minded, the desires of the flesh, the, the pride of life, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh will keep us in trouble if we keep valuing that and not valuing the eternal life that God is offering us. There was a rich man who came to Jesus and he said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The Lord says, sell everything, give to the poor and follow me. And he went away sad because he had much wealth. It was his values that were the problem. He said he had obeyed the law his entire life. He had, he had been a good person and he had gained great prosperity. All he needed was eternal life. <laughs> I guess he wanted to keep everything he had forever. <laughs> The stuff that you have, the car, the house, that stuff will rot and weary. You are going to a place where that stuff can't go. We are spiritual beings going to a spiritual place. The Bible says not to lay up treasures for us on this earth. Matthew 6 and 19. So we have to be careful about what we value. Changes what we do. This hope that we have. This hope that we have. Changes what we do. Changes our choices. I said if our values change. What we do should change. How we treat people should change. How we love others should change. We don't have to lay up treasures. Because we're going to give them all away. Helping somebody else. That's what the church does. We come together. We gather together. You remember the early church? They had all things in common, Sister Jones. Why did they have them in common? Because they put them together to help one another. We're still the church. 
And God is still expecting us to give our time, our talent, and our treasure to his work. I said lost and found. I said lost and found. And the reason I wanted you to think about lost and found is because what I've discovered is there's some things that we hope for that we really need to lose. There's some hopes that we're hanging on to in this life that we really, if we've lost hope in them, we need to let them go. There's some stuff that we've hoped for our whole life that God has never ordained for us to have. And we need to lose those things. And we don't need to look for them anymore. Because the only thing we need to find is our hope in Jesus Christ. And when you find that hope in Christ, just like the scripture said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and let God provide everything you need. Always remember, love God, love people, make disciples. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. Keep the hope alive. Lose that childish hope. Find that mature love that you have for Jesus Christ. Develop that mature relationship with Jesus Christ and his hope for the eternal life that he has brought to us. The eternal life that he died on a cross for us. That he came into this sin sick world, walked and ministered in this sin sick world, came down out of glory. To walk among humans in human flesh. He suffered. Then he suffered on the cross. Then they buried him in a tomb. But God didn't leave him there. And that's the reason for my hope. Because God did not leave Jesus dead body in a tomb. He raised him up on the third day. He raised Jesus up. And he walked amongst the people again to demonstrate God's great love towards us. And if God would raise Jesus up to demonstrate that love, you can put your hope because Jesus said just what he did for me, he's going to do for you. I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I go, you will come also. And my hope, the reason for my hope is Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, the one who saves and can bring me home safely. Whose spirit through the Holy Spirit dwells in me and will carry my spirit away in the last days. That's the reason for your hope too. Because he died for you. And God raised him up. He paid the penalty for every sin that you would ever commit. Past, present, and future. It's a reason for your hope. So keep your hope in Christ. The one who allows us to live. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. By letter, by candidate for baptism or Christian experience, you can come. You can come today. Your hope is in Christ. Oh, my brother. You don't have to walk down the aisle. You can just stand where you are. You can raise your hand. Our clerk will get your name. You can join Shiloh. You can, if you want to be baptized, we can baptize you. First Sunday's coming. Just let us know. You can call us 317-546-2193. Let us know what your desire is. But we are here for you. You can come. Give your life to Christ today. Amen, amen. It's giving time, church. We receive our offering. We don't walk around uh, during the pandemic. We're, uh, we've got a tithing box in the back. You can put your tithe envelopes, Sunday school, whatever you want to give to, put it in an envelope, mark the envelope how you want to give. You can drop it off in our mailbox. You can mail it in. Uh, you can give on Givelify electronically. 
but we thank you for your giving. And church anniversary is coming up. It's next week. Amen. And Sister uh, Jones is collecting for church anniversary, uh, but you can put that in the box and mark that on the envelope as well. Church anniversary. Amen. Whatever you give, we will appreciate. The church appreciates your giving, Shiloh. You are a giving church, and we say thank you for all that you do. Amen? Amen. This time, let us stand for the blessing of the offering and the benediction. Amen. Father God, we come now. We just want to say thank you for your love, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you most of all for Jesus Christ, who you gave to us to give us hope, a hope for a future, a hope for eternal life. Even in this life that we live, he gives us protection through your Holy Spirit. He gives us power through your Holy Spirit. He gives us provision through your Holy Spirit. Your love endures and abides with us, Father. We thank you, Father. We ask that you would continue to bless these offerings that these members, these contributors are giving, Father. Bless it, both the gift and the giver, Father. No, you've been blessing them, Father. You've been keeping them in a mighty way. And we say thank you. We just ask that you would continue to bless them. And now as we come to depart from this place, but never to depart from your very presence. May the love of Jesus, the grace of God, the communion of the sweet Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each and every believer. And all the believers said, Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace.